Live coverage now, and it's the men's 800 meters, two laps of the track. The meeting record 142.61 by Bill by Wilson Kipkita more than 24 years ago. I don't think that'll be under threat here, not in this breeze. Patrick Zieradzki of Poland is the uh, pacemaker. Peter Ball shares uh, in seven with Marco Rock. Ball, of course, fourth in the Olympic Games. Rob of Canada, semi finalist in Tokyo, but a very impressive winner at the Prefontaine meeting last Saturday. There is uh, Patrick Dobbin. What a sensation he's been the pole this year. Former 400 meter hurdler. He's never run an 800 before February. He took the bronze medal in Tokyo. Quite astonishing. Ferguson Chariot Rotich goes in lane five. The Olympic silver medalist. Second last Saturday in Eugene. By the way, this is, about, uh, this is a, almost a copy of the Olympic final in Tokyo. Just about everybody is here, including Emmanuel Correa there, the Olympic champion. 44.2 400-meter runner. That's why he won that slowish final in Tokyo. Gabriel Tuala, France, seventh in Tokyo. The 23-year-old was only second in the French Championships, and Clayton Murphy, who's ninth in Tokyo, said he just ran a dreadful tactical race, had a chat with him this morning. Two white, shares lane two with two cup. Hasn't raced since the 6th of July, Cornelius Two white, over seven weeks ago. Will he come into this fresh or a little bit ring rusty? Amal Tuka, second in the World Championships two years ago, so sixth in Tokyo. And Adrian Ben of Spain, well, he's uh, improving rapidly. The Spanish champion, fifth in Tokyo. And a good 1,500 earlier on this season, a 337 performer. But uh, Emmanuel Kipkurui Correa, coached by Paula Reng, who won the Seoul Olympics back in 1988. It was third in pre last Saturday. So they get underway here. And I don't know whether or not they'll be able to go with the pace in uh, these breezy conditions. You can see the flags there, top of picture, blowing reasonably healthily as they head into the back straight and break from lanes now. There's been talk of Peter Ball wanting a really quick time here tonight, but I don't know if he will go for that. In fact, no, he slots in right at the back of the field as Ball is one of the smaller of these men as Sieradzki takes them through 400. What looks a fairly nippy 24.5, but nobody else is up for it. That's a seven or eight metre gap back to a rock in second place he's a huge fella the canadian 22 year old pan am games champion uh, two years ago as they come into the home straight steve the pacemaker looking behind him there but that six or seven meter lead is really not helping too much yeah he's trying to stay with the, the lights that are pacing him but the others weren't that interested but, and it's Arop as ever he's such a lovely runner and he likes being in front and that's where he finds himself and he's actually opened up a little bit of a lead here Rotich chasing him Korea in a good place as you said ball slotted in at the back which was a bit surprising to see now Arab will stay strong here the question is the others just starting to chase him down now but can he hang out there in front well they should have learned their lesson from pre five days ago six days ago because he did this there he dominated and ran a very strong stayed strong down the home straight 78 seconds at 600 metres, they are beginning to close on him. Bold's got a lot of running to do at the moment, and Tuka in the yellow looking strong in fourth place. But Arop, has he saved something for the home straight? The Olympic champion, Correa, coming back at him with that familiar nodding of the head, the gap behind them. Back to Ferguson and Rotic is growing all the time, but Arop stays in the lead and takes the win by half a metre or so from the Olympic champion. And that time, well, that's not bad at all in these conditions. 144.52. Most of this field have run considerably quicker than that. But in these gusting conditions, high up above Lausanne, that is really strong running. And Arop getting just reward there for taking the race to the others. They really should have learned their lessons. If they didn't race against him, they should have watched the race in Eugene last Saturday. That's another big win. Yeah, well done him. You're right, Tim. He, he, I think he may have run very close to negative splits there, but it was a really controlled race. Didn't go with the pace. Then he got going. The others let him go way too much, really. No, they know what he's like. They know how strong he is running from the front. And then when he got to 200 to go, you think, all right, they're coming. But no, he just can manage to... It's not so much changing pace. It's just 
maintaining really strongly. Look at that, Korea giving it everything the Olympic champion, but can't quite get there. Uh, just rewards for are up though. 144, uh, five exactly. And I reckon it was, as I said, very, very close to negative splits there. But nonetheless, you've got to read the conditions, haven't you? You've got to pace make this too quick. I'm sitting back. And then you've got to work out how best to go against the wind, with the wind, sit in. And he was the one who got it right tonight. Hi. Hi, Marco. How are you doing? Um, can you talk us through your race tonight? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to get out too crazy. The first 200, I sort of relaxed at the start and realized nobody was going with the pace. So I just de decided to jump in front and uh, made a move at about 250 to go and held it all the way to the finish. Great. Um, how do you think of what do you think about this crowd? It was amazing. I haven't been in a stadium this electrifying, and I can't even remember when. So it was just I was happy to see everyone here. It is so great. What's your next steps um, this season? Uh, so I'll have Paris in, in a couple of days, and then the Diamond League final in Zurich. And uh, any goals for next year? Uh, yeah, definitely. Win World Championships. Thank you. Thank you so much.